Watson with Cats, manufacturer of the Herc Reynolds 80-ton industrial air conditioner. This short video is going to go through the setup, startup, and operation of the 80-ton industrial air conditioning unit. The first step in setting up the Herc 80-ton industrial air conditioner is to determine how it's going to be transported. You have two options. The first is the integrated forklift pockets that are located on each of the long sides here. Located there. The second option is this is a certified lifting stacking frame that offers a four point connection here on the corners to a single point lift. Either one of those methods can be used to transport the machine. Please note the weight tag affixed to the bottom of the skid right here in this particular unit weighs 9,500 pounds. Make sure your fork truck or crane is rated for that load prior to moving it, and you'll want to set the unit on a stable, level ground. The center of gravity is located right here in the, on both sides, all four sides of the, of the machine in between the forklift pockets. Please note that the center of gravity is indicated on all four sides of the machine, is indicated right here by this mark. That's useful in doing the overhead lifting and centering the load with a tag line. The next step in the setup is verifying the power requirements for this particular machine. The 80-ton industrial unit clearly identifies it on the CAPS data tag. The minimum circuit ampacity is 172 amps, and the maximum overcurrent protection is 225 amps. So you'll want to make sure that your customer-provided power is large enough to handle that load and or the generator prior to hooking up the machine and operating it. Next step in our setup is going to be connect our main power lead. We're going to start by removing the weather dust caps off the L1, 2, and 3 as we bring in the, as we bring in the, the power leads. Please note the first power to hook up always is going to be the ground and then it'll be preceded by L1, 2, and 3. Four sixty volt three phase. We verified the required impacity. Now we've got it hooked up. We've currently got our power source locked out and tagged out. Now that we've met our connection, we're going to check, make sure that all of our cables are tight, that there's no nicks or frays in it, and that our cable routing is in such a way that it doesn't present any type of trip hazard. We're going to energize the power. We're going to check for main power light to come on and see if our phase correction light is, is off. Okay, we've removed our lockout tag out from our main switch gear. Our cable's now energized. We're simply going to energize our main circuit breaker on the front of the panel. We get a power light indication, but we also get a power incorrect indication. That indicates that two of our phases are out of phase sequence. What we're going to do is turn the main power breaker off of the panel. We're going to disconnect power, lock and tag out power at our power source, and we're going to have to reverse two of these leads here. Please note, you never want to change the cam locks as long as the cable has been energized. First A and B phase now. We've removed our lockout tag out of our main power source. Now we're going to energize our main breaker. Now we have a power light and our phase incorrect light is now off. That indicates that our unit is phased correctly and ready to operate. Okay, our next setup is, but prior to startup is going to be, we've got two condensate traps that are located in our drain pan. As the air conditioning unit is operating, it's going to not only going to cool the air, but it's also going to dehumidify it. The 80-ton industrial unit makes a tremendous amount of water. We want to verify, because of our high static fan, that this trap is actually primed. You just take, simply take a bottle of water or a water hose, put it inside the trap, and fill the trap completely full of water. Now, bear in mind that there's two. There's one on this side and one on the other side. You do the same thing for both sides. That way, when the machine's up and running, the trap's primed. All the water starts uh, condensing inside the evaporator cool will actually come out and drain and can be plumbed to, uh, to a sanitary surface or to a, to a water hose. Our next step is going to be to hook up our, our supply air ductwork. The 80 ton industrial air conditioning unit has actually got three connections. There's one, one here, one here, and one here on the side. Three connections. That's just really for versatility for ducting on, on projects. You really only have to have two of them hooked up. It's 10,000 CFM because of the high static fan. Traditional setups are going to be two ducts. Sometimes you'll need three. That's really for air distribution. How the connection of the duct happens, you've got a pull pin here for the hinge and a cheap latch here. You release both of those and the, the door will swing open. You drop the pin in, 
We've got friction clamps on all four sides here. You'll open up all the friction clamps. As your ductwork comes in, you'll note the, the direction of airflow. That's important. You want to make sure your airflow is going the right direction. Take the ring and connect the bottom below the, the friction clamps first and roll it around the top. You'll be able to lock those all four of those in place. They'll be held steadily and it'll reduce your air leakage. And uh, especially with these high static pans, you're going to want to make sure you get a good lockdown, good connection there. And from there, we'll end up running the ductwork out and stretching out to the, to the project and uh, ducting into the building, tent, or whatever whatever service we're, we're providing for a condition there. The 80 ton industrial air conditioning unit is actually 100% outside air. Uh, design. What that means is it's designed to take in 95 degree air and in one pass through the evaporator drop 40 degrees off. The inlet air connections, there's four of them here, they open just like the the uh, supplier ducts on the other side. You pull the pins out the bottom, open them up, the G-flashes open up here. Once the pins pulled out, you can place it back in the hole and hold the doors open. This is important to do when, when you're, especially when you're doing free air intake, dropping the pins back in because the static pressure will actually cause these doors to close. Filters are located behind those and because these are 100% outside air units, they can, they can uh, handle the 95, 95 degree air, inter entering air temperature, but you also can duct them. So we do have the friction collars here on all four sides. Please note that on all of our industrial units, all the return air connections must be open either to the outside air as this is shown here when we operate this machine or all of the outside air intakes must be ducted to the area that's being conditioned. You can't leave any of these doors closed. It'll reduce cooling capacity and cause service maintenance issues with the unit. Okay, just to recap, now that we've, we've got our, we started out by setting our unit in place. In this particular case, we used a forklift. We verified with our weight tag and our center of gravity uh, the amount of uh, capacity we had to handle. Bear in mind, we can, you can do the overhead lifting. We set this one in place with a forklift. Our next step was to verify our power requirements, which was 172 amps minimum circuit capacity or 225 amp MOCP. Uh, we hooked up our power. We had our phase backwards, but we changed that around. So our, we're now properly powered up and phased correctly. We primed our P-trap on both sides. Remember, the 80 tons got two P-traps, so you want to make sure both of those are primed. We ducted two of our supplies. We have three available. We hooked up two of them. And this installation, we're doing 100% outside air intake. So we'll take the 95 degree air in. It'll leave at 55 on the other side. Our next step in the process is startup. Fairly simple. At this point, we're just going to go to the main power disconnect here and turn the power on. Again, our main power light illuminates. Our phase incorrect light is off. So that gives us a good, we're, we're good to go. The next step is right here is our main system switch. We turn this on and it will immediately turn our fan on. Now our blower is running. Remember that all the real equipment, the indoor blower runs continuously because our return air sensor is inside the intake. Possibly got to be turning air over in order to control. Okay, now that we've got our unit up and running with our high voltage, our fan's running, now it's time to set our temperature control. All of our controls are low voltage panels, so we can remove our high voltage hot gloves. I've taken my liners off already. It just simply takes a straight screwdriver here. You'll notice it says temperature control and closure. Air sensor switch located inside. It's a twist lock quarter turn. Open it up. The first thing you're going to see is you've got your entering and leaving air temperature. All of the, the industrial air conditioning units have the ability to control off of the hot temperature or entering air temperature or the cold leaving air temperature. Most case, almost all cases, it's going to be entering in some specialty process applications you'll be in leaving. In this case here, we're going to be in entering. So once we've got it, it, it uh, turned and entering, we're going to go through the setup of the, the temperature controller. Use the Siemens logo temperature controller, and we'll go through the set point uh, set point configuration next. The next step is going to be to set our temperature inside our microprocessor. So you, what you're going to do is hold down the escape button, and then you'll use the up and that, or the down arrow. That takes it 56. Go down the other direction. One more time. That's okay, one more time. That'll take you to 54. So then you, after you've got it set in, we'll set it at 55. Now you're going to let release the escape button, push the green OK. So our temperature currently out here is 98 degrees. Our set point is 55. 
We have it set for entering air condition here. The microprocessor will go through a startup delay and you'll hear the first compressors coming on. The 80 ton machine is a four stage machine. So it's got four 20 ton compressors. Those will load up individually off the processor. And the processor also will start the condenser fans, uh, which it has six of them on top. That's based on head pressure. So as the head pressure comes up after the compressor starts, then systematically the condenser fans will come on. There's our first compressor. There's our first condenser fan. And it'll continue to operate until it reaches an entering air temperature of 55 degrees.